Hey everybody, Brayden here. Welcome back to a new video. Today we're going to be covering my 21st game on my Road to Chess Mastery. Now this is tournament number 7 and I am playing in round 1 versus Carlos and I'm playing with the white pieces. Now let's see how the game progresses. I played e4, c5, knight to f3, d6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, knight to f6, and knight to c3. And of course, there's a lot of options here. Uh, a6 is probably the most popular. There's also things like e6 or even g6 if you want to go into a dragon setup. But of course, a6 is, as I said, the most popular. It's a very good move because it controls the b5 square. So it's a very good prophylactic move and can lead to very sharp lines. I played mainline with bishop to g5. We see the move e6 f4, bishop to e7, and queen to f3. Now this is all theoretical at this point, queen to c7 and castles, uh, normal moves, and now we see knight to c6, which is a little bit rarer. Normally what you'll see in this position is knight to d7. The whole point of this move is it just covers the f6 square, but it also covers e5, uh, whereas the knight on c6 covers e5, but it doesn't cover f6. And usually we want to uh, control the square as much as possible as black to prevent any tricks in the future uh, from white. Another thing is that after taking um, in this position, we can play the move e5. So that's another issue. And if you take with the queen thing, just queen to g3, notice that you cannot take on e7. The whole point is after takes, 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 queen to g5. And if you have to move back, this has got to be bad. The only move in the position is bishop to d7. And this is just losing pretty much. So that's uh, definitely not something you'd want to do. But okay, so uh, the whole point is e5. Um, and you can't take on e5 at the end because of queen takes c6. So generally, uh, this is why knight to c6 isn't so great because even though you control e5 and d4, um, after knight takes, now you don't have as much control over e5 and we see immediate issues with e5. Unfortunately, I didn't see this in the game. I opted for a more complicated position with knight to b3. Uh, however, even though it's more complicated, uh, or at least what I thought was going to be more complicated because it leaves every piece on the board. Um, it ended up not, not just just not being the right move. Um, and this this type of move, whenever you have tension, sometimes it's okay to play knight to b3, especially if you need to keep this piece for something. But in this case, the knight on b3 is uh, slightly worse than the knight on c6, and I had to play a move to actually put it on b3. So it just doesn't make sense. Uh, when you think of things like that, where it's already a good piece on d d4, instead I should probably just go for maybe a bishop to e2 if I don't even see knight takes c6. But knight takes c6 does have uh, pretty strong ideas there. And uh, another another line I'd actually like to talk about here um, is after taking. Um, or no, sorry, not after taking. I believe. It, yeah, no, taking, sorry. <laughs> um, taking e5 takes takes, knight to d5, and bishop takes e7, knight takes e7. And um, in this position, you can play knight to e4. And you think you can take on e5, and it looks like you can, of course, remember that there is d6 check. Uh, but d6 check, queen, knight d6 check is just a huge threat. The best thing is probably to castle, but even then, this is... Uh, very very scary because the knight is going to d6 but for example if queen takes e5 just one cool line is just knight takes f7 and we win back the queen or we don't even sorry no, we don't win back the queen but we win the queen for the pawn so uh of course this is just uh winning so of course black would not want to go into this knight b3 now we see h6 bishop h4 and castles I thought this h6 move was not great, but actually it's not It's not the worst move in the world. Um, it, it does have its uses. The bishop on h4 is uh, undefended now, so there can always be some potential discoveries. For example, knight takes e4. Of course, it's not quite working yet, 
um, as I should just be able to take on e7 at the very least. Um, so it's it's not really too great, but okay. Um, now we see knight to h7, and this is probably the critical mistake in the game. And uh, I should have won this game because of this move alone. Uh, however, we don't know the result. So do I win? Do I lose? Is it a draw? Anyway, <laughs> anyways, okay, so knight to h7, bishop takes e7, knight takes e7, and h4. And now we can see this is very scary. There's ideas of h5 and then g5. The whole thing is a g5 would still be good, for example. So um, f6 was played, but for example, let's just say a random move. I'm not saying this is a good move or a bad move. I'm just saying let's give the move to white. There's ideas of, well, g5. Uh, and this position actually do, just does work because uh, h5, we can just take the pawn. But there's also always ideas of h5 where now we play g5 and there's no h5 for them to play so these are always ideas and now the h6 pawn we can see why it's not such a great pawn to have because now there's a hook we can we have something we can attack whereas when the pawn was on h7 there was no weakness now we have a clear weakness we can attack and it's always weird to think of pawns like this as a weakness as um you know pawn storms can actually open up lines because of it but they're not weaknesses in the traditional sense of it's a square that can be occupied by pieces or it's a pawn that can't be defended well. It's uh, it's weak because it opens up lines. It lets white force open lines uh, and win the game. So, okay, going back, h4. Now we see f6 and I go for the queen g2 line where I'm just trying to go for g5, but moves like f5 also make a lot of sense here. Um, I ended up not going for it. So queen to g2, very logical move. The whole point is I'm trying to get g5 in and I'm trying to uh, take one way or the other and uh, open up the g file. So as we can see, white has a huge advantage here and this advantage does not go away for a long time or maybe it doesn't go away at all, who knows? But uh, it's no doubt that white has a much better position here because the attack is much more immediate and black has weaknesses, f6 and h6, whereas white does not have any. So e5, so there are two moves here. After e5, there's f5 and then g5 or just g5 immediately. I went for g5. Uh, it is arguable that f5 might be a slightly better, but g5 still has the same premise where uh, either way, uh, I'm going to take one of these ways, preferably with the on the h6 square because uh, it won't allow this knight to get back in the game with knight to f6. Um, so they took on g5 once, I took back and rook to f4. So I didn't want to just take on h6 immediately, even though this is a reasonable move. I thought, why not just wait a move and play bishop to e2? And I, I think this actually makes a lot of sense because the whole idea is now there's no rook g4 in the position. So for example, in this position, if I take, maybe their idea was a rook g4 and after my queen moves, then they can even take back. Uh, this should still be much better for white, but why allow that? Why not just uh, take a move and play bishop to e2, where now rook g4 is out of the cards and their, their knight is still really bad. Um, it just it just prevents their play, and I think this is is reasonable. It's not a, I'm not going to praise the move, but it's a good move. Okay, bishop to e2, queen to d7, and I took on h6. So their only move here is really g6. Um, they can't take back and moving the knight. Well, I can always just take on g7 and then I'm up a clean pawn and this is a much better position. There's also bishop c4 stuff in the way. Uh, so maybe g6 just made more sense because they were scared of bishop c4 and now they have the h8 square. And uh, after g6, we need to remove the defender of g6. And I thought the best way to do this was to just attack the knight. And uh, the only way to do that is by playing knight to d5. The whole point is if they were to take on d5, then I can take on g6 and uh, and then recapture on d5. So that's actually what happened in the game. Knight takes d5, queen takes g6 check, king h8, and rook takes d5. There's also a uh, bishop c4 in this position. The old point is you want to capture with the bishop instead, as unfortunately for black, uh, they can't move the knight away because there are checkmate threats. For example, if they go here, then there's just checkmate. 
and knight to f6 uh, just fails to rook to g1, and uh, they they're just losing in this position. There's always rook takes d6 ideas as well, and uh, queen to g7 or queen to g8 um, is going to force checkmate. So this doesn't work. So example for an example here, uh, queen to d8. So now there's no g8 uh, checkmate. Now there's just queen g7. There's just too many mates threatened here. So going back, rook takes d5 instead, and rook to f6, queen to g2. Queen to g3 might have been a little bit better to cover h4, but it's not really too big of a deal. Queen to uh, g2 is also quite good. Rook takes h6 and rook to g1. So going for queen to g8 and queen to f7. Now here I played h5, and I think this is where I'm losing the threat. h5 doesn't make sense in this position. It's not really doing much because this pawn is uh, this pawn is irrelevant to the position. It really is. Um, it's not like this pawn is going to win me the the game. If we get into an end game where we trade off all the uh, the minor pieces, uh, all the major pieces, and just leave the minor pieces on the board, this pawn is just pretty much lost because their king is in such a good position that there's just no reasonable way to keep it. So playing a move like h5 is just completely irrelevant because it'll just take them time to take it when we can actually improve our attack. And there is a concrete line where we can get into a winning endgame here uh, that should be easily converted. Bishop c4 forces an endgame. It's a little weird, but the whole point is that there's g8 problems. And we saw this idea before with bishop c4. So let's see how it works here. Queen f8, rook takes d6. The whole point is if they take on d6, then queen to g8 and rook to g8 will be checkmate. So this isn't possible. Bishop to h3, what a surprising move. The whole point is now the rook is also covering g8. So now there's no ideas. But unfortunately here, we can just go queen to g8 anyways and takes, takes, takes. Rook takes h6, rook to g1 check because the bishop was attacking it. King to d2 and king g7, rook h5, and they can't really defend e5. So knight f6, rook takes on e5, and we are up three pawns here. And any um, with reasonable play, this is uh, quite an easy conversion. So this, uh, this is probably just the best route to go about winning this game. However, I did not see that at all because the, those lines are ridiculous. That's that's way too complicated. I played h5 trying to keep the pawn because I'm up one point to material. Why not just keep the advantage? However, now my opponent develops bishop d7, rook d3, rook g8, rook to g3, and I missed this idea of queen to f4. And now, realistically, this is just even king to b1. Uh, maybe knight to d2 was a little bit stronger, but I played king to b1, and this is definitely a draw now. After rook takes g3, queen takes g3, queen takes g3, rook takes g3, and knight to f6, and they just pick this pawn up. Now, even though this is a drawn position, uh, I should just play something like knight to d2 here, defend the pawn, and sure, there's still play, like uh, either side can lose this, but when we look at this objectively, this is a draw. And there's still there's still some play. But uh, I I definitely played a weird move. I tried to keep the H pawn, which uh, once you get more familiar with these types of end games, you should know the H pawn is definitely not important in these positions because the king is always going to be able to pick it up eventually. So it just does not make sense to go rook g6 um, because they will just take the e4 pawn. And unfortunately, go rook g6, rook takes g6, pawn takes g6, and knight takes e4. Uh, it's even material. However, this is an extremely weak pawn. There's no way I'm going to be able to keep it. King g7 and bishop to f5 pick it up pretty much immediately. But I try my best to hold on to it. Bishop c6. Bishop to f7, which doesn't make sense. King to g7 and king to c1. Now here what I should have done is just given up the pawn. Maybe just move back bishop c4, bishop e2, and try to keep the uh, two minor pieces on the board. Because 
If we keep two minor pieces versus two minor pieces and we're down a pawn, we are much worse uh, and it might be able to be converted, but that's a big difference compared to being just one minor piece versus uh, one major piece because in some cases we can sacrifice one of our pieces for say two of their pawns and trade off the other two pawns with two of our pawns for example and having two pieces two minor pieces versus one minor piece is usually even uh, it's usually impossible to prove a win except for two bishops versus the knight but uh, even in computer terms, it takes like 66 moves in most cases to win those. But okay, it's a draw. It's pretty much a draw if you have one minor piece versus two minor pieces. So uh, unfortunately, I didn't go for this. Knight to g5 and knight to a5. Uh, I I just didn't think to keep the bishop on the board for some reason. I tried to hold on to the pawn. But after knight takes f7, um, I'm losing. So you know, in reality, this... This should be converted into a win um, because my opponent is up an extra pawn and they can get their king active quite quick. And uh, all they have to do is just try to trade off the minor pieces and every king and pawn ending uh, here will be winning because uh, up a pawn and there's no direct weaknesses or activity for me. There's no... Uh, there's no situations where I can like swindle here. So this is objectively a win, um, but my opponent offered a draw and I immediately accepted because at this point I knew that this was losing because I'm down a pawn. So uh, I was very happy here because uh, even though I had a winning position and I had a way to convert to a winning end game, I still was able to go away with a draw instead of losing which uh, I was in this position. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And although this was an uneventful game, uh, I still have four more games of this tournament. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you then.